What is going on guys? Welcome back to the free trading game collection. We're not going to waste any time here today. We are going to get straight into it. If you want to check out the series playlist, that is linked in the description. In the last episode, I said I had some more video games lying around the house from my childhood that I was going to put into the collection. I have a couple here, but I for some reason I just can't find them. They are here somewhere. Honestly, if you saw my attic, you'd probably understand why I can't find them. There are boxes everywhere. How the roof hasn't caved in, I don't know. I, I lie, it's boarded, that's why. But anyway, I found a couple, nothing special. I'm just gonna very quickly go through them before we get into what is quite possibly the biggest haul of games I've picked up at any one time that are all going into the collection. I know I have, I wouldn't say a large number of Mega Drive games, but I do have more than what I've got here. I've only got two, unfortunately, to show you, neither of which are exciting, so we're just going to get through it very, very quickly. The first one is going to be European Club Soccer, and the other game I have, nothing special, don't get excited, it's FIFA 96, by far my favourite FIFA game. Now, unfortunately, this is damaged. I say damaged, it's been defaced. It has Liverpool written on it. Why? Because I'm a stupid child and apparently I thought that was cool. What an idiot. I'll explain why I'm not putting European club soccer into the collection just yet uh, when we get to what we're about to talk about. So in previous videos, I have gone to the car boot, one of my favorite places to pick up video games. Now you've seen me go to the boot sale and buy from this guy before. Um, he mentioned that he watched the videos, not that that had any real um, effect on our relationship, but uh, we swapped numbers and he has been sending me pictures and lists of things that he has for sale that he doesn't always take to the boot sale because he has so much of it. Now, I've bought games off him before. Uh, you've seen the, the 50p games. That was his stall and a few others a week before. But he was sending me pictures of things and we decided on a price for 10 games. 7 Mega Drive, 3 Nintendo Switch. The price was £95. So we are right now, this second, going to deduct £95 from the cash profit in this series. That's a big chunk that we're gonna have to recoup somewhere. Don't worry, I have a plan. So that you don't have to rush for a calculator, uh, 95 pounds spread across 10 games is nine pound 50 a game, which I thought was a pretty good price. Considering we have three Switch games in here, that's a very good price. All three of these Switch games are worth a little bit more than nine pound 50. Two of the Mega Drive games are not, but it kind of works out. You'll see what I mean in just a second. Now, unfortunately, I don't really have any footage of me picking these up. I mean, I do, and I have me going through the bag or whatever, but I don't want to ruin it, so I'll show you that at some point during this video. Now, let me just dive in to the least exciting two games. Uh, I requested these, I wanted them, and I stand by my decision. You have to have a golf game in your collection. It is PGA Tour Golf 2. Now, I haven't actually played this. I remember playing PGA Tour Golf you know, the first one, but um, this is complete with the manual. Very good condition overall, really, uh, for, for its age and everything. Uh, happy to put that in because like I said, you need a golf game. I do actually like playing these, so there's the first one. And the reason I wasn't going to add that European Club Soccer to the collection is because, yes, I bought it again. I forgot that I already owned this somewhere in the house. This one, though, is in much better condition. The one that I have, completely sun damaged. Uh, both of them have the manual. This is the proper case that houses the game and everything. The label is in phenomenal condition. But uh, yeah, that is the one that's going to go into the collection. So we now have a European Club Soccer to sell. So far, you're probably thinking to yourself, you've spent £9.50 each on those two Mega Drive games. That That's not a good deal. You can probably get them for about £4 somewhere. You're absolutely right. They are the least valuable games in this entire lot. Didn't have anything else that I really wanted. I did want those in the collection at some point because I do like sports games and such. But um, every game from here on in is worth more than £9.50. Some considerably more. Now, this next game I've already sold on to make a little bit of the money back. Uh, it was a Switch game. It was Taxi Driver Simulator. Now, unfortunately, this one I didn't know was digital. I was actually told they were all physical. Obviously, this one just slipped through the cracks. It's not a big deal because it was sealed. Had it not been sealed, that probably would have been a problem because it would be very difficult to sell a digital game that isn't sealed because people are very sceptical and rightfully so. I sold this one for just over £10, I think. So we are making some money back there. And then we dive back into the Mega Drive games. So uh, I may get demonetized for this. Balls! 
Uh, this is Balls 3D, uh, the Battle of the Balls. Now, I have never played this. This is essentially a beat em up uh, through balls. I, it's really confusing, this game. I don't really know an awful lot about it. It is literally just balls and they fight against each other. Um, again, I think they're all complete, these games. Ugh. Yeah, as you can see there, I think that's the manual for it. The game is a very weird shape, but there it is. Um, that one, I think, sells for around £12 in this condition, which is quite nice. We are making a little bit there, but I am going to keep this. At the very beginning of this series, I set out some rules to make the whole thing a little bit trickier and to be more of a challenge. As time has progressed, I've kind of got rid of all of the rules, apart from maybe one, where of course we need to be spending the profit on video games in order to make them free. The other thing I like to do, of course, is only really flip video game related items. However, sometimes I do veer off that and I flip things like VHS players or Blu-ray players or football shirts. Now, I don't do that very often. Today's pickup and flip is going to be video game related and it's loose video game related because it's a laptop. So laptops, I, I do tend to stay away from, I won't lie. There are too many variables here and too many risks involved. Things can be running slow, components may have been switched out and so on. There are so many different reasons why I tend to stay away from them. So it popped up. 50 quid, hadn't been up there long, in fact, only a few minutes actually, so she told me, uh, and it, it kind of ticked all my boxes. So the person in question wasn't selling a bunch of laptops, they had a few household items, all the items looked clean, the laptop itself looked clean. That to me suggests that it would have been well looked after. It was only 50 quid. I looked it up on CEX to the best of my ability because they didn't show what I needed to know exactly what model it was. Acer Aspire 3, yes it's the model but there are so many different other laptops under that sort of title. So it's difficult to know what you're buying unless you can see the specs. But I did have a worst case scenario and I had a best case so I thought 50 quid was worth a punt. However, I did shoot an offer of 40, we landed on 45 and I went to pick it up. Okay, laptop acquired, let me flip you around. Technology, eh? There we go, bang in, Acer. It's got a little Bluetooth adapter on the end. Don't know if I can get three pound for that or something. I'm obviously joking. I mean, I might be able to, I really don't know. But uh, yeah, so there it is. Let me stop walking, Acer Aspire 3. This does look brand new, there's not a mark on it. I do have the charger, it's in my bag. It is so windy out here. But yeah, I'm going to take you to CEX, see if they'll give me the credit that I desire right now. My original plan was to trade it into CEX. However, after looking at the specs of this laptop, I realized that wasn't going to be viable. Uh, and that's just because they didn't give anywhere near the amount that I wanted. It wasn't the model number that I was hoping for. And I think they gave around 85, 90 on credit, which is still decent because we spent 45 on this. However, I decided just to get some cash back into the series, I was gonna flip it on eBay. And it sold within a couple of days. Now this was a while ago, but we're only now getting to it because I've got such a, a backlog of things. I'm just introducing it here. And it's quite convenient that I'm introducing it here because we've just spent a substantial amount of money. So we're a little bit better off now that we've introduced some money back into the series. Let's get back into the pickups. This next one isn't complete, unfortunately, but it's a game that I used to love as a kid. And my wife even likes this game and has requested that we play it at some point. It is Micro Machines. Now, Micro Machines is one of those games I played the first one, I think I played the second one, and then they kind of just started releasing weird variants and I just lost track. So this is the definitive version for me. Used to love going around the breakfast table, the bath, etc. What a game. Now, we actually valued this at £5, which I thought was very low. Unfortunately, it's not complete, but I'll allow it. Next up, I'm going to show you a Switch game. This is a Switch game I'd never heard of before, and I was going to sell it because, again, I think he had it a little bit undervalued. I think he priced it up at around nine or ten pounds. We obviously got it for nine fifty. That I could sell this for between fifteen and eighteen if I held out for the price. Unfortunately, it is ESRB, which I wasn't aware of, but I'm okay with. It's Chris Tales now. I'm guessing you can get this PAL. I don't know whether it's more expensive if you do get it PAL or not. I haven't looked into that side of things, but um, I'm gonna keep it for now. and I'm going to try it eventually because I looked at a little review to see if it was anything that I'd be interested in. And it looks 
different to anything that I've ever played before, but that's okay because I'd like to get into this kind of thing. I wouldn't say I'm certain I have this game in the house somewhere, but there is a very strong chance that I do. It's two in the same series. First up is going to be Tasmania. I used to love watching the cartoon as a kid. This is not an expensive game. Again, it's around £12, so we've profited slightly from it. It is complete with a manual in very good condition as well, I might add, apart from the back that has a, a few scuffs. But really happy to add that. Like I said, I think I already own this, but again, I can't find it. But uh, it was a good price, so I thought I'd pick it up. And then a game I haven't played. Now, he actually had this a little bit overvalued at 15 when it really is more of a 10, 12 pound game, but it works out that we paid 950. Taz in Escape from Mars. Now, like I said, I haven't played this. It's got Marvin the Martian in it as well as a few other characters, of course. But um, I'm looking forward to actually giving it a go because it's one of those that uh, I always wanted to play as a kid and for some reason I never got. So that and that one, I believe, completes the Taz collection on the Mega Drive. I don't think he had a third game. Correct me if I'm wrong. Up next and my final Mega Drive game before I get into the gem of this video Speedball 2. Now, unfortunately, this isn't complete, but to get this for the equivalent of £9.50, slightly less now, of course, that we've sold that taxi simulator game, which I would have kept, by the way, if it was physical, but I've forgotten about it now, so it's fine. Uh, this is worth around 15 without the manual, 20 plus with the manual in good condition. The condition of this is actually really good. It just needs a manual, so I'll look out for one. Uh, but... Um, yeah, really happy to put that into the collection for the first time ever because, like I said, I've played this a lot, but I never owned it. Have you ever played a game to death, but only ever rented it? That is the question of today's video. I rented the hell out of Speedball 2 from Blockbuster and my local video store, but I never owned it. I must have paid for the game three times over just in rental fees. Let me know in the comments if you've ever done that with a video game. My final game in this pickup is a Switch game. I'm really excited to get into it because I loved the, the one before, I think the one before this a lot. It is, of course, Pokemon Arceus. Do you call it Arceus? Pokemon Legends Arceus. A lot of people call it Arceus. I think it's probably Arceus. Anyway, uh, that game was effectively £9.50 little bit less because of Taxi Simulator. He had it priced up as 26, which I actually thought was an insane deal, considering that CEX sell this for what, 38? That is a mammoth deal. Very, very happy with that one. Really excited to get it into the Switch and play it. I have actually started playing Sifu. It's taken me a long time to get through it, or to get to it, I should say. But now that I've started it, I know full well I'm going to finish it before I dive into this. But I think this could very well be next on the list. We're not quite done in this episode, we do have another thing to talk about, but uh, those two, very happy to put into the collection, I really hope I like this. I know I'm going to like this, but what a price, £9.50 a game. Now he actually collects GameCube games, which is something that may play into my favour at some point, because he says he's more than happy to do trades. Now I don't really have any GameCube games I'm willing to trade or that he would want, however I do have credit for CEX coming up that I could buy GameCube games with and then take to him and say want to trade and then maybe we can get the games that we want on the Switch or on the Mega Drive or any other platform or even a console or money off a console that we really want because there are definitely some consoles I'm interested in just to rattle off a few he has a few special edition PlayStation 4s which I wouldn't mind picking up so in the last episode, I picked up Mario Odyssey on the Switch for around £9, plus fees and postage, it worked out to just over £12. That game is £38 in CEX. If you want to get it on eBay or whatever, it's probably going to cost you £30 plus. So to get it for £12 delivered was sensational. However, I did say I had a deal to trump that. I picked up a game that was about the same price. I think it was almost identical in price. It may have been a touch more. I will obviously show you on screen. For me, this is just a little bit more special. And the reason for that is because this game is sealed. Now for me, sealed games, a little bit bittersweet because I like to have sealed games, but at the same time, I don't like to have them because I want to play them. I understand why people collect sealed games. I more than understand it. I've got a few in my collection, but I do plan on opening every single sealed game that I have because I don't really want to be double dipping on things. I don't want to have to have a sealed copy and then have to go and buy an open copy just to be able to play it and preserve the sealed copy. So I will open this, which will pain me, but the game in question 
is Mario Kart Deluxe 8. They have just released another pack of downloadable tracks for this, which is cool because I have actually played this. So when I first got my Switch uh, a few years ago, just as the lockdown started, obviously everyone bought the Switch then. Uh, I got, I think I got this game with my Switch or my wife got it with her Switch or something, but I did play this quite a lot and it was enjoyable. Uh, but I've been playing it on the Wii U ever since because I got rid of it when I sold that Switch. Now we have it back again, but we have it sealed. Uh, I bought this at the almost very same time as I bought uh, Mario Odyssey. Different sellers, but for some reason they both went up in and around the same sort of 10 minute period and they were just really cheap. I do not understand people who will just bung things up for like 9, 10 quid or whatever. But we now have another Mario big hitter game in the collection. I say big hitter, what I mean by that is we have a a staple, a first party Mario title. And you need this. If you have a Switch and you don't own this game, you know it's on your list. You know you need to get it. You know you will get it at some point because you have to, right? I love adding Mega Drive games to the collection. I love adding any game to the collection, but there's just something special about adding Switch games to the collection. I don't know why. This is my favorite platform to collect for at the moment. I love adding one game, but three games in one episode, that's a big win for me. I'm really, really happy with the pickups as well. They're not cheap titles. These are good games. I am very, very quickly running out of room for my Mega Drive collection, so I may need to purchase another shelf soon, which is a bit of a pain in the ass, but it's a necessary evil when building a game collection. I do have another series that I'm kind of cooking up on the side as well, so look forward to that. If you want to check out another video from me, you can click here, and until the next time, goodbye.